Remember that lipids are big time energy storage molecules. They have other functions, but I want to talk to you right now about some lipids that are out there and some controversies you may have heard of. You've probably heard of saturated fats versus unsaturated fats and, and are the, which one's good and which one isn't good and the uses of fats. Let, let's, let's take a quick review here of what a fat is all about. Fats are triglycerides, a glycerol backbone hooked generally to three fatty acids, and the fatty acids can be any length. And the thing I want to talk to you about right now is this this whole idea of what is a fatty acid and what does the term saturated mean versus unsaturated. Well, quick review of carbon chemistry. Remember that carbon has four bonding sites. And using the Lewis dot notation, we, we have our four valence electrons. Remember that carbon tends to form chains. So one carbon can hook up with hydrogens and completely saturate its bonds with hydrogens. Ooh, did you hear that word? Completely saturate its bonds with hydrogens. All right, on the other hand, many carbons, as in what you seem to see right here, where the carbon is hooked to a carbon, hooked to a carbon, hooked to a carbon, and the hydrogens are filling those free bonding sites that are not part of the carbon chain, will hook with another carbon and will make his electrons X's. And so our chains can grow. And so we could go with a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. And so blah, 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 all the way down to the end where we can illustrate the end of a fatty acid molecule with um, CH3. Well, I want to talk to you about what makes something a saturated fatty acid or a saturated fat as opposed to an unsaturated one. If you remember much about carbon chemistry, you remember that carbon can sometimes form double bonds. Remember that carbon isn't necessarily, and you know what, carbon can form triple bonds even. We don't find that a lot in living systems. It's these double bonds that are very, very important. So, so carbon can, can, can actually, as it's making its chain, if we were to pop off one of these hydrogens, if this were going to be part of a fatty acid, and we're going to pop off one of these hydrogens, well now, this carbon in my hand has one, two, three bonding sites filled, and it indeed does have a fourth one to, to, uh, to continue on in, in the chain way. However, when that happens, it, you'll notice that we have lost a hydrogen. In losing that hydrogen, we've lost our idea of being saturated with hydrogen. And so what starts to happen in a situation like this is you get something that looks like this. So here's my carbon, and I'm gonna illustrate all of the hydrogens with just plain old straight lines now. I'll throw in the hydrogen so I don't, there, okay? All right, I heard you guys worrying about that. All right, now here's what's gonna happen. Here's a carbon, and we're gonna put that here, and we're gonna put that here, and now what we're gonna do is on my next carbon, we are gonna double bond it to that one. Okay, now let's see what happens. Check this out. This carbon is using, let's see how many bonds it's using. One, two, three. So it only has room for one hydrogen right there. Continuing the chain, this carbon is already using one, two, three. So it only has room for one hydrogen there. We have lost this idea of being saturated. So we now have an unsaturated fat. What do you think polyunsaturated fats are? Ha! Ah, you got it. Polyunsaturated fats are fats that have several sites with double bonds. Well, what's up with this controversy of saturated versus unsaturated fats, and why do we care? Well, here's the problem. Your body's are lacking something. And what they do is we lack the ability to make double bonds. We can't make those double bonds. We cannot, when we synthesize fats, when we synthesize fats, we can only make those big old long saturated fats. But the problem is that we need unsaturated fats in our cell membranes. We need, you see what happens when you, when you make a lip, and there's a lot to learn still about lipids and cell membranes and things like that, but we need one simple thing I want you to know for, for the purpose of where we're going here is that our cell membranes, our cell membranes need unsaturated fats. 
And the second thing I want you to remember is this. We can't make them. We can't make them. So guess what? You need to take some in. Now, that doesn't mean you start eating your all that ice cream. Oh, good, I'm going to eat ice cream and take in all this fat. Um, but the bottom line is we do need to take in some fats. Of course, our diets are way too fatty. But this isn't a course in nutrition, although, man, don't push that button because I feel very strongly sometimes about some of the things you guys take in. But here's the problem. The problem is this. Saturated fats... Well, wait a minute. I call this a problem. I, it shouldn't be a problem. But you're going to see some people have made it a problem. And I don't, well, watch this. Saturated fats, those, those fats that, the, that have no double bonds, saturated fats are more solid at room temperature. In other words, a saturated fat is less likely to be a liquid at room temperature. Okay? So we're going to say solid. Okay? Unsaturated fats at the temperature that we often will um, consider to be roomy temperature will be more liquid. All right. Here's the problem. The problem is peanut butter. I don't know if peanut butter is your problem, but it's the problem we're going to talk about right now. Peanut butter has, peanut oil has unsaturated fats in it. Peanut oil. Unsaturated fats. Okay. Is that good or is that not good? Think. Yes, that's right. That's good because we need these guys. We need unsaturated fats. They're unsaturated, which means they're liquidy at room temperature, right? Guess what? Some of you guys, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's like the other consumers. But they go, in the, we have our high-tech flask. They go to the grocery store where things are stored at room temperature, and they look at the, in the grocery store, and they take a look at this peanut butter, and they say, man, this peanut butter is spoiled because it has all this gross grease on top. And so they don't buy it, unless they're a wise in the consumer, unless they're listening to me. Because, you see, that's unsaturated fats. That's good. Those are, well, that's not bad. Okay? Now, what has the peanut butter industry done? And those of you who are watching from the peanut butter industry, don't take this personally. But what they have done is they take peanut oil and they hydrogenate it. Hydrogenate it. In other words, they add hydrogens. So you know those double bonds? They're breaking them and putting hydrogens on them instead and making it into a single bond by bombarding that thing with hydrogens. And so instead of oily peanut butter... Well, you still do get oily peanut butter, but now, instead of, and we only use the best here, we open this fresh for you guys, because we want you to see that we're not making this up. And instead, look, no oil. It's nice and solid, and it's saturated. And it's not going to do you much good, unless you're real skinny, and you need to fatten up a little bit, okay? Because you're not going to use this in your cell membranes. You are going to use this in your cell membranes, don't, don't take in too much of it. So, saturated, unsaturated, one looks better. Which one? I don't know, you know, I don't get grossed out by this. This one everybody thinks looks a lot better, but this one is better. Remember that next time you go grocery shopping.